Joel Sherman leading the league in information. Thank you, man. Go ahead with your grown-up self. Go ahead with your grown-up self today, Joel. <laughs> uh, hey, Joel, you had That's written last board. week. See? They know it's the soundboard. <laughs> You had written last week uh, about teams facing the most off-season pain if they fail to deliver big stars. And earlier this week, you helped us profile your top five. Take it in America. Giants, yep. Cubs, Yankees, Red Sox, Padres. All of it makes perfect sense. There are five other teams who you feel are in this category as well. Take it away. I just want to freeze on that I might be making perfect sense. Thank you, Matt. Uh, number six, I have the Cardinals. Uh, they've already done some of their offseason work uh, by signing Gibson and Lynn and Sonny Gray. But the division is probably getting better. The Cubs are trying to do big things. The Reds look like they're move, moving up. I always trust the Brewers will, will figure some stuff out. Just for the heck of it, you know, you say you're getting starters. You know, Gibson and Lynn combined 522 ERA last year. They'll give you innings. How much is it quality innings? I still feel like they've got to sort out all those extra bats and try to get maybe even one more starter or bulk up their bullpen, and I think they'll do that. I wouldn't be surprised if they were a trading team at the winter meetings. All right, St. Louis Cardinals. It makes sense. Uh, and I don't know if more is being promised by their uh, front office staff. We're going to have John Mozeliak on with us on Monday. Gorman's morning. the guy I'm curious about. If they deal him? Yeah. I mean, well, he's got to figure something out with him. Well, I got one for you, Harold. So, like, why don't, why don't we play this? Who says no to this trade? Uh, number seven, I have the Blue Jays, who need left hand hitting. And the Cardinals seem to, like, just have a copy machine on left hand hitting. Guys like Gorman or Carlson or Donovan. Are the Cardinals a team that should take a shot on Alec Manoa and take a left-hand uh, bat back for that? Toronto is in an interesting position because they have Canada. four starting pitchers who are signed to really good contracts. Gosman, Berrios, Baz Bassett, uh, Kikuchi. But their offense, which we thought was going to be a behemoth not long ago, like Vlad Guerrero is very good. He's not the great player we thought. They traded Gabriel Moreno and Lords Guriel. Uh, and Dalton Varsho didn't hit well. George Springer is starting to show some age. By the way, this is a play team that's only made the playoffs once since 2016. There's pressure on this team in a very tough AL East to figure out how to get in again. Yeah, we thought that run when these kids got to the big leagues was going to take off like forever. And they haven't got there. You're absolutely we right. We don't know. I, the Guerrero thing's curious because, look, 2019, he was a, a breath away from an, a, a, or an MVP award. Not 2019, <laughs> but was it 21? 21. 21 yeah. was his year. Uh, last two years have not been as good. I don't know that there are teams that evaluate <laughs> him as a super-duper star or as a, a good player. And I, I, I'm guessing you're in the second camp. Yeah, I mean, until he proves he's going to be closer to that 2021 player, especially he keeps getting closer to free agency, the price keeps going up. Yeah. And as we see, these kind of executives in the sport right now, the value on the single-dimensional corner player, first baseman, left fielder type, has gone down over years. So it's not big there. And one of the players we think about in that, that ilk a little bit is Pete Alonso, who plays with my number eight team, the Mets. And I feel like even as they think big picture, they want to start being strong contenders 2025 forward under Steve Cohn and their new president of baseball operation, David Stearns. They have a lot to do this offseason. There is no way they're just punting on 2024. They have certainly made calls on Otani. Are they in it? I'm not sure. They certainly are in on Yamamoto. I think that they'd be the team that would offer the most if he wanted to come play there. And once you start doing that, that means you're playing for 2024 as well. I don't think they'll touch their prospect base very much because they still are trying to build long term. But just look, you have some of these commitments here like Lindor, Marte, Diaz, that Senga. That's a, that's a win now kind of team. And I do think that David Stearns is in an interesting spot trying to live in two worlds. How can he make 2024 good enough to figure out a way into the postseason without disturbing the long-term future? I, I think you're being really generous with them at eight. That, that's that, that's a lot of money to say, hey, you can. We're going to look at you at eight. So you think there's more pressure? Than oh, that? absolutely. You got to remove one, Harold. Then who are they moving in front of? I'm going all the way back to your top five. They're in the five. I mean, all right, knock one out. I'm like, your Giants. 
They the Giants more. are number one. Is there a team under Ex more pressure than the Giants? No. Yes. The Mets are. Uh, they have a payroll almost three hundred million dollars. No one's getting fired from the Mets after this season if they don't make the playoffs. I There's would. Three hundred uh, million dollars. Everyone better be renting in San Francisco. I, I don't know. I, I think the Mets are getting a nice pass right here. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I, I, I kind of agree with Joel here. And by the way, you should know better by now than to push back on Joel's run. Oh, I know. It takes I love a lot it. of time in this. I, I I, know I, it. Joel, I will speak on your behalf by saying this. That where do the Mets before you hang jump on, in? Hang there, on, the where chair. do the Mets fit financially in that group of five? But I'm not talking well, about financially. They have a fresh start. They they get a little bit more slack now because there's a new president of baseball ops and a new manager coming in. But they 180 games in two years. They they the. the clue where they are is they definitely have the largest payroll last year. I wouldn't be surprised if they have the largest payroll this year. But their owner ate over $80 million to make Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander go away, which was his clue that he was playing long term because he was buying prospects. If he was willing to eat that money, he's willing to eat a little more money this year to try to be good in 2025 going forward. The Giants are not in that situation. The Giants have to make a run to the playoffs. They're bleeding fans. They need an attendance. They Who need the to win right now. And they are in the division with the Dodgers. You like that segue? Who are number nine. Uh, uh, right? uh, leave little, me room to retort. No, not at all. Me, okay, go ahead. You let me do television for a decade, I will segue. <laughs> okay? And the Dodgers will have either payroll number two or three in here someplace. And I just think their pressure is an historic one. They are so good every year, and yet they only have the one championship since 1988 in a strange season, in the COVID 2020 season. They need to kind of get another championship or two in this run. They've made the playoffs, what, 11 straight years. They're clearly in it for Otani. They might be in it for Yamamoto. They've got Betts and Freeman in their prime. And Harold, you made this point before, even if they have Otani, Otani isn't pitching in 2024. They have to find at least two and maybe three starters out there. Mm -hmm. And if I were closing this up uh, with number 10, it would be a team that doesn't have to find starters. The Mariners can go about six or seven deep this year. And don't forget, they get Robbie Ray back probably for the last two months of the season at some point. But this is an organization that's only made the playoffs once since 2001. They lost to Oscar Hernandez in free agency. They just traded Suarez, their third baseman. They needed offense, and they've lost some offense. And yet, when you talk to other teams, you hear they're blanching a little bit at what the prices are out there. Can they find a bat or two or three to go around an outstanding, young, high-end rotation and begin to be a team that makes the playoffs regularly? All right, I'm going to give you a trade. He's already been brought up. You just had a different team. I'm going to St. Louis. And I'm saying, here's one of my young pitchers. Give me Nolan Gorman. Gorman plays third base for the yeah, Mariners. You got to do much better years. than Gorman to give up. If you're going to, I, I don't think they're going to give up Gilbert or Kirby for that. If you're talking about like someone like Miller or Wu, maybe they could talk. But if you're going to give up Gilbert or Kirby, you have to get a great young position player because those are superb, controllable starting pitchers. And and I think he's a superb, controllable player. Yeah, too many strikeouts in his game for me.